Hello fellow guitar geeks. It is DIY pedal kit building time. This is the Light Cycle Phasor 2 from Stumac. And in this video, I'm gonna build it, I'm gonna play through it, and then I'm gonna review not only the pedal itself and the sounds, but also the build experience and hopefully relay exactly what it was like for me as a non-pedal builder, just a little enthusiast to build this kit. Before we go any further, consider this a sponsored video because Stumac sent the kit and they've paid for my time. They've not paid for the words that come out of my mouth. Now the main reason I like Stumac kits is because they give you this, the instruction guide, which is full of color pictures and really is an idiot's guide to putting this pedal together. As I mentioned, I'm not a pedal builder, so if you're not, if you're just someone who fancies a challenge, this could be the kit for you. So at the end of the video, I'll give you an easiness out of 10 rating for, for the building, I guess. I have built, I think now 12 pedals, I, I've lost count, but the point is about 80% of those pedals didn't work. And it's only since I started doing Stumac pedals that I started to be successful. And that's because of these instruction guides. So I went to stumac.com, link in the video description, and downloaded the PDF of this instruction guide because the very first step you should do is print out that PDF and stick all your parts to it. And if you have kids, this is an amazing fun experience for them. So me and my son uh, did this together and we tested all the parts with a multimeter, which he loves doing. And then we stuck them to the relevant sheets on the relevant parts. It's great because you can make sure that you have all the parts there, which we do. It's already done. Everything we need is in the box. And also that you, you have them there when you need them. You're not searching through resistors. And I do recommend uh, some tools. The first one I absolutely recommend if you're about my age, is uh, some of these because these aren't strong enough. These helped me see uh, the parts on the tiny little resistors very well. I have this PCB holder from Stumac also, so you can hold the PCB in there. Some way of holding that board is absolutely necessary. So there's that one. Uh, I've got some wire strippers. These are not from Stumac. These are just um, from my regular local store. I've got some long nose pliers also from my regular local store. I've got some wire strippers. These are brilliant. That's some quadratic thing. Uh, then I've got the Stumac screwdriver kit for guitar players. That's all the screwdriver parts that you need for a guitar and I guess none that you don't. So you're not throwing away any bits. And oh, these from Pepper's Pedals, the rocket sockets. The pedal kit comes with everything you need, including the enclosure, which is primed with this white paint and the screws and these stickers as well. So if you wanted to, you could just have a white box with these black and white stickers and you can just build it like that. It is kind of fun painting this, but I made a mistake last time I did the two Kings and that was I used a dark color with these dark stickers and that didn't work because you couldn't really see uh, the labels. So have a bit of design thought beforehand. If you have dark stickers such as these, then use a light color on the box. Not, uh, not a dark blue with sparkles, which I thought looked beautiful, but you couldn't see the labels on the pedal. Whoops, my fault entirely. Right, uh, let's get building. This PCB holder is a definite upgrade from the one I used in my last build because this one holds it exactly in place when attaching the parts and soldering. And of course you can flip it around for when you do want to solder those parts on the other side. And I did forget to mention in my tool list a soldering iron. Links to all tools in the video description, by the way. So far, so good, diodes are in. Resistors, part one. I made a mistake and it was really stupid. In the past, I have read these instruction books cover to cover before even taking the tools and the parts out of the box. This time, I got a bit cocky because I've done a few of these pedals now and I missed a very important instruction on page 17 in my book and that is to install the resistors upright. I cursed Stumac for not making the board space big enough and I really thought it was Stumac's fault and couldn't wait to rip them apart in the review section of this video. Turns out it's all my fault and I should have installed them in the way they tell me to in the instruction manual. So now I have it right. This time I'm installing the remaining resistors upright as it says in the manual, I'm a doofus. What I will say in my defense is that I'm really happy I laid out the parts and stuck them on that paper at the beginning of the build. This made this not only easier, but very enjoyable. And apologies for all the afro you're getting in that top-down camera. It is almost impossible to keep this out of the way of the lens. 
Onto the trim pots, I almost put this first one in the wrong place. Even though I'd stuck it onto the piece of paper in the correct place, I wasn't paying attention when placing it on the PCB. So make sure you check your parts, even though you've checked them at the beginning. You know, check once, no, check twice, cut once. Now it may look like I've made a mistake here by soldering in the IC sockets, but not actually putting the chips in. But some of you said in the comments section to leave the chips to last, because if they in some way get overheated, they can expire. So I thought I'd go with your tips and put the IC sockets in now, but the chips in much, much later. Thank you for the tips. Uh, if you have an opinion about anything in these videos, by the way, make sure you let me know in the comments. I love putting capacitors on a PCB, and I think it's because it starts to make it look multi-layered and like a tiny little city of parts. This is a very tight circuit board, and these capacitors were quite hard to put in with my big sausage fingers. So I had trouble and I had to move a few parts around, but I got it in the end. Now, finally, the most exciting part of the build for me is the internal yellow LED, which interacts with the photoresistors to make this pedal work. And the instruction guide goes into pretty good detail about how you should place this LED. And I was actually quite nervous about putting this in because if I got it wrong, it meant the whole pedal wouldn't work, which I know is true for every part you put in, but I felt a little extra pressure to get this bit right. So I went off for a little break first, a little walk and, and think about my life for a moment before I came back to this and attempted it. It turns out it's pretty simple and I shouldn't have worried so much, but then putting in the photoresistors around the outside I felt they needed to be absolutely perfect. So I don't know if they are, but they feel good enough to perfect. And it reminds me of a little flower, which is quite nice. And then finally onto the lead wire, which you need to cut into one and a half inch and inch lengths and strip the ends off and then get them on the board. I found this one much, much easier than previous pedals I've built in the past. I think it's down to that PCB holder. Now, making sure that the daughter board is the correct way up, attaching it to the main board is really simple, and it hasn't been that way in the past. I found this part normally pretty difficult, and I don't know if it's down to the kit being better or my ability and my level of confidence, but doing it this time was a lot easier than it has been in previous builds. When you get to this stage of the build, you're almost on the home straight. So snap those index pins off the pots and make sure the pots go in the right place. If you mix up the pots, the pedal is not gonna function and sound correct. Also, don't forget to add those insulating tabs to make sure the pots don't ground out. Now, if you've built this pedal before or if you've got really beady eyes, you might have noticed that I made a mistake. I left out a transistor all the way from page 16, right at the beginning of the build. Now, if I had forgotten to put this in at this part, uh, I, would have been ha I would have had a terrible job putting it in afterwards because that first pot is in the way of this transistor. So luckily, I saw that there were three holes there that were, they looked like they needed something in them. So using my Lego brain, I went back through the manual and indeed back through my sheets and saw that there was a part still stuck to a piece of paper. Whew, that was lucky. Right, pots on. Now to make sure that the board goes in straight, Stumac recommend to use the enclosure to hold the pots and place the board on it. So at this point, I decided to spray paint the enclosure bright pink. I made myself a little spray booth out of a cardboard box and sprayed on a initial coat, let that dry for about 20 minutes and put on three more coats after that and then let that dry for about four hours, which left me with a beautiful bright pink box. Now to protect the pinkiness of the enclosure, I decided to cover it in foil. I don't know why, it just seemed like a good idea. And these builds are kind of experiments, so this is another experiment. And with the pots and foot switch fully soldered in, I could then remove that aluminium foil, which actually added to the finish because it wasn't quite dry and left this almost paisley looking thing going on, which I think looks amazing. And now we really are onto the last stages, putting everything inside the box. Uh, the LED was particularly difficult because the legs are only just long enough to reach the PCB to solder them in. Then it's time for the power and input and output jacks, wiring this in, very, very simple. However, I didn't like the way that you had to put a cable all the way from the top of the box to the bottom daughter board. I thought this was a bit messy and there's probably a better way to do this. 
In go the chips. Now, even though I messed up those resistors, I had a good feeling about this build and it did power up on the first attempt, which is an amazing feeling and a sense of pride. So after dancing around the room for a little bit, it was time to adjust those internal trim pots. I can't show you this bit because due to the LED inside flashing so rapidly, it can trigger seizures in some people and I don't wanna be responsible for hurting anybody. So I don't know if it's possible via YouTube, but uh, I've cut that bit out so you don't get to see me adjusting the internal trim pots. However, you do get to see me adding the external pots and lining them up. And now it's time for you to hear the pedal. It works and it sounds great. Great, right, I'm gonna mess about with some settings and see if we can get some even more funkiness out of it. Let's, um, let's push the depth all the way up. All right, let's mess with the rates. I'm gonna put that about halfway. And now three quarters. I finally let's push that rate all the way to the top. wonderfully warbly. Let's mess around with the feedback. So feedback all the way at minimum should give us less of a phasery sound. Let's turn it up uh, about halfway. I've got to max the thing, haven't I? I wouldn't be me if I wasn't going to turn everything up to the top. <laughs> Yeah, this thing is great, and I'm immensely proud that I've built it myself from a kit. I think I think that's five successful pedal builds now, which, um, yeah, pass on the back. Well done, me. Um, don't forget that there are internal trim pots inside, so if this is too wacky for you on that maximum setting, then you can tone it down a little bit. And if it's not wacky enough, you can probably whack it up by uh, increasing internal trim pots or, or fiddling with them. I don't think there's any rules. I think it's your pedal if you build it and you can set it as you wish. Right, uh, let's review the build because I think the sounds, I could go on forever with the sounds, but that's pretty much the range of the pedal. Uh, let's review the build process. Honestly, I thought this was going to be easy because it's smaller and I thought had less parts than the previous pedals I've built. I thought this would be a simple job. But alas, I was wrong. It is a small packed circuit board that has lots of parts and the LED with the photoresistors around the side, you've got to get that right. So it's not just kind of throwing it together like a very easy fuzz pedal. And if you haven't done uh, pedal building before, always start with a fuzz pedal. It's, it's kind of hard to get that wrong because if it sounds wrong, who knows? But yeah, this thing is absolutely beautiful sounding and I'm so pleased that even though it took I did the whole thing, not including the painting, uh, the whole circuit board part of it. The preparation took about an hour. So sticking all that stuff on there was about an hour, but that was with my boy. I probably could have done it quicker without him, but he was getting better and soon he'll start getting paid. 
Uh, but then the actual build process, including making the video, which is quite hard because I'm trying to get out of the way of the camera, was probably about two hours in total, um, maybe two and a half. I didn't want to rush it. I did make mistakes. So heed my advice and make sure you read that very cool instruction manual. Let's talk about the instruction manual. It's brilliant. Um, I kind of want to keep reading it. It's a joy to read. The pictures are beautiful. It's well thought out. It's not perfect. There is um, a little printing error somewhere and I'll find it for you and put it on the screen unless they fixed it in the PDF. So um, yeah, the PDF is something that I think you should probably download rather than read this because the PDF can be constantly updated. This one, if there are any errors, cannot be because it comes in the box. Let's talk price. This is gonna set you back about $125 plus shipping. And I've heard that some people say Stumac kits are expensive, which they are. They do cost money and you can get kits for cheaper. However, this holds your hand the entire way through. And I can't stress enough how good this is. I've said it probably 10 times during this video. If you are new to pedal building, get a Stumac kit. The instructions are phenomenal. And if you make a mistake, it's totally on you as the mistake that I made is totally on me. If you're experienced in pedal building, maybe this one is too expensive and too easy for you. So it's again, it's a hobby, okay? And for the people that say you can buy a phaser pedal for X amount of dollars or euros or pounds, that's true. You're not buying a pedal here, you're buying the experience of building the pedal yourself. And the feeling that I have deep inside my heart from playing this, knowing that I built it, knowing that it works and I had fun with my boy, that's, I'm not gonna say priceless, but that certainly is some of what you're paying for here. I should point out that if you build this pedal yourself, it could sound different because maybe I've made a mistake and this is my own unique Andy Ferris phaser too, or maybe if you build it, maybe you make a mistake and you switch some resistors around and it sounds different. So the sound samples you hear here or anywhere else on the internet could be different to what yours might sound like if you build one. I should point out also that it's based on the Mutron Phaser 2. So if that means something to you, then that's what the pedal is in its essence. To sum this up, I had a lot of fun building this. I think it sounds fantastic. I need to improve my attention to detail in the old finishing. And I think I'm gonna do that on the next pedal. And then I'm going to attempt to build an amplifier at some point. That sounds like a fun challenge. Video description is where you will find the links to the pedal kit and some of the tools that I used in this video. Go there, if you buy them, you will have a lot of fun. The Phaser 2 is absolutely wonderful. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.